Hey guys, for today's 10 cards, one suite, we're going to be working with the Needlepoint Nook Suite. I'm going to go through the suite. If you aren't interested in that, I will include a timestamp where the cards start, the 10 cards. But for those that aren't familiar, let's go ahead and go through this real quick. This is one of my favorite suites in the Occasions catalog. I love it. And I was kind of unsure. I mean, I like the way it looks, but until I worked with it, did I really fall in love with it. So it comes with a stamp set, DSP. You have coordinating framelits, dies, buttons, ribbon or thread, and then a cardstock pack. So the stamp set is this. You get 17 stamps, and it is the distinctive, oh, what is it called? Distinctive stamp. So it's like a photograph, and then they turned it into a stamp. So the stamp looks really realistic. So you get some great sentiments. Happiest birthday you, to you. Get well soon. Friend, sending you happiness and love. Thank you. People like you make the world a better place. What I like about this is that the sentiments come with various, come in various fonts. So really pretty. It is photo polymer. Here are the coordinating dies. If you purchase the bundle, you do save 10%. Um, and this occasions catalog is good until the end of May. Now, I don't know if this will carry over or not. More than likely, like the paper and stuff won't. Those things typically don't carry over. Um, but if it does carry over, it may not be available in a bundle again. So if you're interested in this and you want to save a little bit of money, and you want the dies, I would get the bundle. So here are the dies. You have this beautiful stitched, it doesn't cut anything, it stitches it. And then you have this that goes with this stamp right here, which on the stamp set is right here. And then you have some other little embellishments. This is another thing, Let's see if I can pop this out off. Yeah, this is three different stamp uh, dies. So you have these two, again, that don't cut, but add a stitched element to your card. And we're gonna work with these today. And then this, which you can use to put your sentiment in, just like that. So very, very pretty. Now, let me see where it is. This right here, this is a great sentiment punch, but it does not cut out anything. So you could do this. And this die coordinates, so it'll stitch around. It coordinates with a punch. Let me grab that punch. I did not have this punch until I realized, okay, I'm gonna need it for this. And I love punches so much. I almost like punches more than dies. Um, I don't, I don't have the bag. I'll have this linked below. I don't remember the name of it. It's a brand new punch for me. I've never even used it. But this will cut this out. So you get this beautiful stitched detail and then the punch will cut out the sentiment you choose to use. So that is the bundle you can get together, the dies and the stamps. Then you get some buttons. We'll get to the paper in a second. These are needlepoint nook mini buttons and they're really adorable. Let me make sure I'm in frame. Pop these out. So very cute little buttons. You get 24 of them. So you get kind of a couple different variations in pink and then a white. Really pretty, really cute. I like the, the small, smallness of them. <laughs> then you get some old olive linen thread. I love the linen thread so much. These sometimes come in paper pumpkins and um, they're my favorite. So the old olive, which I have used, I think in my last video. Then your cardstock pack. Now I've mentioned the cardstock packs before. If you are building up a collection of cardstock, this is a great way to build your collection because you get three different colors. So you get 24 sheets, eight each of three colors. Instead of buying like a whole pack of Balmy Blue and a whole pack of Blushing Bride, these are great because sometimes you're like, you know what, I never use Balmy Blue, so why do I need 24 sheets of Balmy Blue? But you use Blushing Bride. So if you use one color a lot, then you know to get a single pack of that color. So this is great. I mean, if you get nothing else and you wanna build your cardstock collection, this is a great way to do it. So I don't have Balmy Blue, but I do have uh, Blushing Bride. 
and Old Olive. Now, I had a ton of comments about these, the way I store my paper. These are Avery ticket holders. They're in the description box below. So if you are interested in this, it has been great. I've been using this for um, a little over a month now. Great way to store your paper and I love that I can keep scraps. Please check the description box. I had them in my description box and I had so many questions as to what they were. Um, I'll tell you one thing, as a person that makes videos, and if you make videos, you may feel the same way. The worst part about making videos is linking the products. I hate linking products. So when I get a comment about a product that I took the time to link, it drives me a little batty. So <laughs> check the description box for any links. Sometimes I do forget, and if I forget, I will definitely fix it and let you know. But um, I just can't answer comments when it's the information is already there, and I hope you guys understand that. Of course, I appreciate you commenting. I appreciate you watching, but when I've taken the time to link products, please check there. But these are Avriel, or not Avriel, but Avery ticket holders, and they're brilliant. And then I have magazine. I'll grab one real quick. I have these magazine holders. You can see that in the camera um, that I hold everything in and it sits on my shelf. My other channel has a craft room tour video. I'll link that video below if you're not familiar with my other channel. I just redid my craft room and this is my new paper storage solution. So it works great. And again, got these off Amazon. They will be linked below. So those are the two colors. But going with the DSP, I'm going to bring in other colors. So I'll show you those real quickly. Doesn't mean I'm going to use them, but I have them laid out. Very Vanilla, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, Flirty Flamingo, Crushed Curry, and Berry Burst. So those colors are all colors that coordinate with the DSP. Now let's move to the DSP because that's my favorite. So the DSP is 12 by 12 sheets. You get 12 sheets, two each of six double-sided designs, 12 by 12. Well, 12 by 12 is nice, but I don't work with 12 by 12. So I cut them down to six by six. So I'm gonna go through these, each side of these and show you what the paper looks like. So yeah, I um, So the back side is this. I'm just gonna do it, let me make sure I'm in frame. I have to get on my tiptoes to look at the camera. And you get this butterfly, and this is kind of like stitching butterfly. And I don't know why this this is a stitch, but it reminds me of chicken feet. <laughs> and you get this really pretty. I have glue on my thumb. Isn't that pretty? Just very realistic. You have a, a subtle pattern, but then you have your you know really. I don't want to say loud, but it is loud, busy pattern that I really love. It's so pretty. That one. Are we still in frame? Yes. Okay. Then you get this. There's the back side of that. Then you get another one. This is a double. There we go. And then, yeah, these two. Which these look very similar, but doesn't that look similar? But the back side's different, so it's a little bit different. Not as, uh, this one's a little bit more, uh, more images to it. So those are the papers that we will be using. Um, remember, during celebration, every $50 you spend, you do get to earn a free item of your choice. And um, if there's something you're wanting, like I said in my previous video, you definitely want to grab it while you can. There is a hostess code below if you do place an order. I so appreciate your business and if you do place an order of $50 or more and I have not sent you a catalog I will send you a catalog in the mail with some information and stuff like that so today we're gonna make 10 cards now when I went to on stage we had a couple make and takes and this was one of them and we're gonna actually make this card I'm gonna show you how to make it because that kind of helps me out <laughs> coming up with 10 ideas also we're gonna case some of these cards because like I said in a video a while ago, I never get a chance to case some of the beautiful cards created by the design team for Stampin' Up. So um, it looks like most of these we'll be able to do. So there's five right here that we're going to case, but I, it could always change once I get going. 
but um, I'll show you how to make these because sometimes people may have problems with looking at one and duplicating it. Now there will be a few things that I see that I don't have, so there'll be a few changes, but overall, I'm going to use this for my inspiration for, looks like, you know, four or five of the cards and then this. And then we'll all create my own. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to go into voiceover and speed this up so this video is not an hour long. And again, all links will be listed below. Okay, starting off with card one, I've already pre-cut a lot of my supplies just to help with the time of this video. I knew this would be long. The cards I'm casing are quite... Uh, they're quite uh, intense. That's not the right word. In depth. There we go. So for uh, just jumping into right where I'm at right now, these two strip stamps, if you're not familiar working with them, you always want to lay them on the table and let them keep, take their natural shape, then use the stamp and block to pick them up. You never want to use the block, put them on a block as you do with normal stamps, typical stamps. Um, then, because you'll never get them on straight. So it's best to put them on the table then pick them up with the block. Here I'm taking Berry Burst and stamping those two stamps on my white card base. And then I'm going to take my pattern paper and attach it wonky. Um, it, to doing this really confuses me. <laughs> um, so I take the pink paper, the powder Blushing Bride, I think, uh, or powder pink paper and go ahead and use that stitched die. Isn't that pretty to get that stitch detail? And so the way it confuses is, confuses me is that it, I have a hard time figuring out, did I lay my pink paper straight because the pattern paper is crooked? So um, I think I got it on there straight. And by the way, if you can hear music in the background, uh, my husband is in his little room playing guitar and um, I'm hoping it's not coming through on the mic. <laughs> Sorry if it is. I just couldn't wait to do this voiceover. I wanted to get this video out to you. So as you saw, I stamped out that three stamps um, and then die cut it, which is really cool because one die cuts out all three. And I did a close up of how cool it looks. It really looks realistic, really pretty. And I will show you it again in another card. And I go ahead and attach them. And then I'm bringing in these sequins. These sequins were not a part of the suite. I do not remember what I used for my inspiration card that I made at on stage. I, I don't have those. So I decided to use the sequins in its place. And then I go ahead and use the glue dot to attach the bow. And then I will put the two cards next to each other and pretty similar. For card two, we're gonna start off with this top one. And again, I've already pre-cut all of my pattern paper. I am using snail tape. My, um, well, they no longer sell fast fuse and I fell in love with fast fuse when I retired. <laughs> so I got another, a bunch of, um, the refills when they're on clearance. Well, for some reason, my fast fuse, the current dispenser I was using is acting up and I, I didn't really want to mess with it. So I'm using snail tape. I'm not necessarily a fan of snail tape. Um, so you can use snail tape. You can use uh, your liquid adhesive. Tombow Extreme Adhesive is a, basically what Fast Fuse was, I'm pretty sure. And that can be purchased at a, another store, of course. Um, I know a lot of Stampin' Up! demonstrators are like, no, no, don't tell anybody where they can purchase anything else. But me, you're going to get what you're going to get. <laughs> Me not mentioning it is not going to do anything, okay? That's how I feel. Um, to me, what I want to promote is the Stampin' Up! stamps and the products that are, you know, strictly Stampin' Up! The stamps, the paper, the ink, anything else. I don't care about adhesive. You do you on your adhesive. That's how I feel. So, um, anyway... I go ahead and stamp out thank you and I go ahead and cut it out of this die and I do trim off the left edge of that die because I wanted it to hang up. Uh, it was going to hang off the card and obviously I didn't want it to hang off. Added some dimensionals and go ahead and trim that edge off. I did add a button right there and I attached the button with a glue dot.
and then I go ahead and I add a glue dot to the button in order to help me tie the bow. And there are the two cards. Really cute. Sorry, I'm kind of busting through this. Card three, I wanted to do this one, and whew, um, this one was a little intense. I had to change it up a little bit because where the solid berry burst cardstock meets the pattern paper, if you can, you can see it peeking out a little bit on the left, they actually did some twine around the border, and I was not about to do that, like a stitching. Beautiful, and if you have the patience to do that, you go for it, but I did not. I really didn't have the patience to do this big of a card. <laughs> Um, I go ahead and do that stitching around the berry burst, and I did use my rectangle stitch dies to cut out that piece of solid berry burst cardstock. I attached it to old olive cardstock and just trimmed it up so there's a little bit of a border, and I go, went ahead and attached all that to my card base. Here I am stamping out my sentiment with Knight of Navy, and then I just trimmed it up and adding a fishtail to the ends. It's not perfect, but I was okay with that. I used crushed curry and cut, die cut out the piece I'm going to attach my sentiment to right here. Out of that one die, I really like that, that die with the decorative ends to it. It's really nice. And so many sentiments can work um, in that space. I'm using my Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to go ahead and attach those. Actually, um, I noticed in the card that it used this ribbon. Now this ribbon is not part of the suite, but um, I will have a link. Everything I use will be linked below. Um, but I did pull it out and I went ahead and attached it with some double-sided tape. Here is my piece of vellum, which I used, um, I used the stitch die on. I'm going to stamp out my floral piece here a few times and then use the die cut to cut them out. I'm using Lemon Lime Twist, which is a color I didn't mention when I was doing my um, overview of the suite, and Tranquil Tide, I believe that is that one color. Oh, actually, it could be Old Olive. Go ahead and stamp out some of the flowers and die cut all these pieces. I do attach the vellum, but then I go ahead and add a couple glue dots to the top and bottom because it was kind of curling up on me. Attach my sentiment, and then I will place all these floral pieces to the, um, the card. Now I trim it up to kind of tuck it easier behind the sentiment. And I should have laid out my, on the right, you see those two floral pieces with the blank center. I should have attached those first. I don't know what I was thinking. Who I'm doing it completely backwards. So this piece should have been attached first. And if, it's fine. It works out. But I'm like, hello. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> this one I actually attach a lot better. Um, that one on the top is kind of wonky. You shouldn't be able to see any of the middle space from that die. Here I cut the last one I had in half and then just tucked it behind the sentiment. And here I've used old olive cardstock and cut out some of the floral pieces, the leafy pieces um, from the dies and just I'm tucking them in there. And I'm just attaching them with a glue dot. You can use liquid adhesive, whatever kind of adhesive you like. I love glue dots because they're quick. And here again, I'm attaching some glue dots. I kind of go through glue dots like nobody's business. I do, you know, I, I talked about adhesive earlier. Here I'm attaching buttons. I talked about adhesive earlier, and, you know, I don't care what adhesive you use. I'm, I'm not really, I don't really promote the adhesive like some demonstrators do. But I do like stamping up dimensionals, um, the Tombow Mono glue I use as well. At times I do use art glitter glue, um, glue dots I do. And I purchase all that from Stampin' Up! because I get a discount. It's one of the perks of being a demonstrator. So I kind of stock up whenever I place an order. Okay, for the next card. This is a new embossing folder. It's beautiful. It's a lace textured impressions embossing folder. Not part of the suite, but of course, you, know, you don't have to use everything that's part of the suite. I don't have the subtle embossing folder that was pictured in the picture in the catalog from this card. So I thought, well, I'm gonna use the lace one. It's so pretty and it's new. 
Here are two of the dies that stitch out and I sped through it. As you can see on the white, past my horrible stamping, you can see the little swirly stitches. That's from those two dies. I just ran it through, then moved it over, ran it through again, and then you know kept moving it to where I wanted it and ran it through my Big Shot to create the stitch look. And there I'm taking that long strip uh, stamp and stamping out the images, and I did a really horrible job, but it, it's okay because most of it's going to be color, uh, covered anyway. I cut that panel in three pieces and attaching them. And here I'm just taking a strip of DSP and kind of using my picture off the screen as a guide as to where I want to place this. Here's a doily. They actually used a crushed curry doily, I believe. And I don't, if I do have it, I don't know where it is, but I couldn't find it. All I could find that would coordinate is this old olive. It comes in a pack, and I'll have that pack listed below of doilies. Doilies are always great to have on hand, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss this sentiment on some Old Navy. I'm using white embossing powder. Go ahead and heat that up, and then I will use that really pretty sentiment frame die here and cut it out. Okay, and for this section of the video and the rest of it, it is going to be my second take at the voiceover. So the background music you will not hear anymore since it is the next day. I went to go upload the video and this part of the footage was corrupt or something. So these pieces I'm attaching here are actually from the DSP. And I fussy cut out a section that I really liked and I'm just tucking it behind the sentiment. Really pretty way to add some floral pieces without having to stamp and die cut you know, if you need something really quick. These were really easy to fussy cut. I attached a button and then I go ahead and attach a bow using the linen thread. And then I will attach these uh, die cuts I cut out with vellum. I think cutting out die cuts with vellum is such a pretty, um, pretty addition to your card. It adds for a little interest, especially if the recipient doesn't know what vellum is and they really appreciate your work and really inspect the card. Um, I think it's a nice little touch to have to your card. So this is a piece of blue cardstock from my stash. I have no idea what color it is. And this butterfly punch actually cuts out the butterfly stamp from this needlepoint nook stamp set. Now the butterfly punch is not available. However, it will be carried over, so it will be back in stock eventually. But it is no longer, you're no longer able to order it, unfortunately. So there is that card. It matches pretty well, pretty good. Again, a little bit of a fussy card, but really pretty. Here for card five, I'm taking these two strip stamps. And the best way to pick up those stamps is to lay them on your surface and then pick them up with the acrylic block. You never want to put them on the acrylic block directly because you'll never get them on straight. So um, lay them down and pick them up with the block instead of vice versa. So here I am attaching my pieces. I used Crush Curry and stamped out those images with Crush Curry, a little bit of tone on tone. And I'm adding my three layers. And then I took this Knight of Navy cardstock and used that stitched die and ran it through twice. And this panel that I'm wanting to adhere on top of the Knight of Navy is covering up most of the stitching. Now, for some reason, uh, I couldn't get it to look like the one, the card in the magazine. My pieces were just too big. And, and since I attached them, it was a little bit too late to trim them up. So I trimmed them the best I could. And you can see a little bit poking through, but uh, most of it is covered, unfortunately. So here I am stamping out my sentiment. I'm bringing this beautiful die that, again, doesn't cut out. It just creates a stitch and it's like a dotted stitch it's not a little lines and I use the punch to punch it out and I just love it I love it so much 
it just looks so good and adds a little bit of interest to your little sentiment piece. I add a bird's nest with the twine or the thread and I, I'm not great at doing that. It's a big old mess, but I use some washi tape to kind of adhere the ends to the card just so it doesn't go anywhere. I pop up my sentiment and attempt to attach it and add a few buttons. The bird's nest, I like the look, but again, I have a hard time. I think it's because of my fingernails and my sausage fingers. <laughs> I can't get it perfect, so. But uh, the end result is good. Once I tuck the right side underneath the sentiment, it came uh, undone. And I do put a glue dot under there off camera to secure it. It worked out really well. And I didn't have the balmy blue again, so I just used Night of Navy instead of balmy blue. But either one looks really good. And you can see how small that panel is that they attached in the catalog. For card six, I'm stamping out some flowers and I will die cut them out. I'm using Berry Burst and Crushed Curry here. And then I will stamp out that background floral piece here. I'm using Old Olive. Die cut those out eventually. I do stamp these three little flowers. Again, I love, I don't know if I mentioned it because I'm having to go back and add to my voiceover, but I love the three flowers. Look at that. And then you have the one die that cuts the three flowers out together. I love that because it saves time and you're not having to try to line up these really small dies. So I took that really pretty stitched stamp. My goal for this video was to use all the stamps and at least one sheet of the DSP. I almost accomplished that. There were a couple stamps I didn't use, but I did use all the paper. But this stamp set, or this stamp was definitely one I wanted to use, and I believe I stamped it out in Trinkle Tide. I made another bird's nest, this time a little bit smaller, and added some washi tape to secure it. And then, of course, I'm adding all these flower elements to hide the washi tape, of course, using some stamp dimensionals to add to my little pieces to add dimension. I really like this card, really simple, but it looks like a lot is going on. Um, the sentiment, Get Well Soon, is a strip sentiment, but I stamped it out and then I cut my cardstock. And I need to do this more often because I've done it occasionally where you kind of add a sentiment, you know, have a sentiment that takes up several lines, but I don't do it enough. And I always have liked the way it looked. You know, if you don't want to cut your stamps, that's okay. Um, but you can cut your cardstock once you stamp it. So I think it creates a really pretty look. And there is the sample card that I cased. Now moving on to the cards that were my idea. And they're going to go quick. I, I do cut out a lot from, you know, just repetitive stuff. You know how to die cut by now. You know where the die cuts are. You know what, you know, the stamps are. But I just attached that piece of pattern paper onto some very vanilla cardstock. The little butterflies in the pattern paper are ivory, uh, very vanilla, I'm sorry. So that's why I chose the very vanilla cardstock. Now, my cards measure A2 size. I know we're almost done with the video and I'm finally mentioning, mentioning a measurement. So A2 size, five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm really bad at... I added a couple butterflies, but I'm really bad at including measurements of other things because I... I don't take the time to write it down. If I did, it would probably double the time that I spend on these videos and they're so long. So, you know, if you're brand new and you're really needing that guidance and measurement, the and measurements, there's a ton of demonstrators that offer that. I just, I don't have the time. Um, I say, don't be so strict on the measurements, you know, do whatever pleases you. Um, but if you are one of those that needs that, there's definitely more inspiration out there and uh, demonstrators that offer that. Me, I'm just kind of go with the flow, do what you like best, and whatever you do is going to look good anyway. So just go with it. I go ahead and stamp uh, with some Lemon Lime Twist on the Crushed Curry cardstock, those leaves. And then I use my Triple Banner Punch to create the banner ends to those two pieces of cardstock, attach them together. Then of course you, I had to use that pretty die and punch to add the sentiment. And then here I am using some of these elements again, cut out from Old Olive to add to my card. 
really simple. If you wanted to mass produce these, it'd be very easy because you could do everything at once, do the sentiment at once, do the stamps, do all the greenery die cutting and just then attach it. So for card nine, I stamped that piece out horribly. I took a piece of whisper white cardstock and a die cut out that rectangle with the rectangle stitch dies, as you can see to the left. I love these dies so much. I love how many you get. It's just awesome. I attached my flowers, which I die cut off camera. I like that I stamped the leaves of the flowers flat. You know, I didn't use the die cut. I just stamped it directly. And then the flowers have dimension. I think that creates a cool look. Stamped out my sentiment, cut it out, attached it. And then I will add a couple of these little green pieces with glue dots. Again, a real easy card to mass produce if you need to. And I'm using the thank you sentiment quite a bit because I need some thank you cards. So these are going to go in my stash to send out to my customers. For my final card, I am just going to use this stitched stamp again. I really love this stitched stamp. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Stamp thank you sentiment in the center, and then I'm going to wrap some twine around this. I keep calling it twine. It's linen thread. But wrap it around. Use washi tape to secure it. I do add a bow. And then, again, I will add some floral embellishments to it once I attach it to my my cardstock. For the card base, I do use Flirty Flamingo. That was one of the coordinating colors. Go and attach it to this piece of DSP. It's so pretty. And then I go ahead and attach all my pieces I have cut out. I use Stampin' Dimensionals to pop them up because I just like the glue dots. I love me some Stampin' Dimensionals to pop everything up add these little greenery pieces and then I bring in which this is a celebration item these wood pieces and I'll I can't link them below but I'll list them they are you can choose to get those for free with a $50 purchase if you choose and that's part of the the butterfly gala suite it coordinates with that and I use that in a uh, the butterfly gala video if you want to check that out so here are still shots of the cards I hope you guys enjoy this as always, I extremely am grateful for your business if you choose to shop with me. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Definitely check the description box for all the links. If you do not see something, let me know. But I will try my best to make sure not to forget anything. Um, let me know what your favorite card was. I always enjoy hearing that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.